So my name is Til Dum, and I'm a master's student in um, AI and data science. And I'm currently writing my master's thesis um, at the CWI in Amsterdam. And um, that's a research institute for computer science and uh, mathematics in the Netherlands. And um, um, my master's thesis is part of a project on um, optimizing uh, large-scale data integration, which um, yeah, involves two huge steps, which are one smaller step, which is the extraction of uh, tabular data out of tabular data sources, and then the integration of those tables and um, loading them into a database to make them explorable. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, the whole purpose of this is to reduce the data janitor work, so the data pre-processing, which takes a lot of effort in the life of a data scientist. Uh, I estimation 50, 80 percent, some say even more. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of potential g gain to get from from uh, from that. Um, the part I was focusing on was um, the parsing uh, different hetero very heterogeneous uh, tabular data sources, um, and I only focus on CSV files. So and uh, one would expect that. Uh, those CSV files are already very standardized, but uh, of course, as we already uh, heard also in the other talks, uh, so far there are a lot of issues uh, with reading clean tabular data from CSV files. And um, yeah, what we want to get out of those files in the end is uh, what, we, uh, what we call an analysis-ready data frame, so what we know in uh, what we have in Python or uh, R data frame a table in a can canonical form which has one header row kind of specific data types um, yeah and which has in best case contains tidy data which means that we have um, one observation per row and one uh, variable per <coughs> column um, so but we looked at uh, data sets from datagov uk and um, we encountered a lot of different issues like ranging from um, UT from not UTF-8 encoding, which is um, from different CSV dialects, which we would have to detect syntax errors in this uh, dialects, metadata in the CSV files, like title, the footer, and so on. And um, I, sh I just show some examples. Um, this file has an encoding issue and has a sum in the last row. So if we want to read that and process it automatically, uh, we don't need the sum because later on we want to analyze it anyways. If we want to have the sum, we uh, can just sum over that column. Um, yeah, or we have visual elements in the, in the table. So they are made to be, they seem to be made for human readability. But um, yeah, when we want to read them uh, automatically, that's of course not good. Um, we can also have multiple header rows, because, and we can, and we even have in that case then uh, a variable, which is a headcount, and uh, which is spread across different columns. So, and to get them into one column, we would have to first have to um, shrink the the three headers into one, and then reshape reshape the table. Um, this example is maybe a bit more clear. So we have uh, variable names or variables in the header row. So what we would like to have in the end is a transpose version of that. I will show that later. And, um, and so on. So multiple, multiple tables per file. A lot of, a lot of things uh, yeah, which are just uh, yeah, frustrating. Um, so if we look at the whole corpus of uh, DataGov UK, um, we see that uh, it's, it's, it's from, end of, uh, from end of August last year, there were around 20,000 CSV files. And 17,000 of them were actually parsable with uh, Panda CSV parser, which is quite robust and has some detection heuristics. But um, if we look deeper into it, there's still issues which are uh, not covered by that parser. And, uh, from that sample we, we had, we just looked at 100 tables and really looked at 
a random sample and really looked at detailed issues of that tables. And uh, if we extrapolate this number, then we end up by yeah, only one third of this whole uh, corpus not having issues, and the rest has some some kind of things which have to be fixed. And um, yeah, if you look at what uh, state-of-the-art CSV parsers are doing, then um, we see they are helping us already. So uh, we have like an encoding, guessing. We have a d dialect sniffer. We also have robust error handling when a column has one element more than it might just throw, throw out this, that column or remove the, the, um, uh, the value. Oh, we have header guesser and so on. And we have a data type detection. But the middle part, like having multiple tables in a file, um, that's of course not covered by the, those parsers because that's not, yeah, that's not what's supposed to be in a CSV file. So we also can't blame the producers of those, those parsers that they did something wrong. But if we want to do data type detection in the end, then we can't do that across multiple tables in one file. So um, we thought, OK, we, we just have to add those modules into those parsers. But um, at the second, on the second thought, we thought, OK, but if we add those elements, to those parsers, if we do multiple, um, like wide, narrow data detection, and we actually start reshaping the, the table, then we change a lot. And if we do that uh, based on wrong assumptions somewhere, like if the header detection failed and we start reshaping the table, then the results are completely messed up and we actually change the data. And that's uh, definitely not what we want to do. So, um, yeah. Those current parsers, they cannot really handle complex data structure, uh, table structures. And um, one wrong, wrong assumption in this process um, breaks the whole parsing result. And um, they're mostly somehow optimized towards speed, towards reading huge uh, CSV files very quickly, of course. But um, if you look at the distribution of size of those tables, the data of UK, for example, they're, they're mostly small. They are probably uh, often coming from CSV, uh, from Excel spreadsheet exports and so on. So we're not dealing with huge files. So it's about reading small files, but then reading them correctly. So for example, if we have this, uh, this small uh, CSV file, what would you expect what will happen? To that, if we have a no, we, we, we have dialect guesser, so um, we would expect maybe that um, yeah, this will actually always happen. We uh, tried it with a different parser, also with dialect guessing, and uh, I couldn't find one which actually parses it correctly because this is of course what what we would expect when we look at it already. What should happen? So. Why is that not working? We have this chain of um, different guesser. And um, yeah, the dialect sniffer is looking at uh, semicolons and uh, commas in, the, in these different rows. And um, they are actually, in this example, there are, there are two, two commas, uh, three, three commas in each row, and um, um, three semicolons. So it's 50-50, so the, the parser just has to, uh, to choose one, and it goes for the comma, because that's the, the most probable assumption, because that's closer to, to the standard, probably. So um, there are some dependencies, because if we would have known that the data type is more consistent in the second parsing option, then we might have reconsidered the, the, the parsing choice we made in the, in the dialect sniffing. So there are, there are loops, and those we want to, to untangle somehow. So, and we want to avoid that the parsing process breaks by just one assumption in the, sh in the chain. So uh, we have one, one motto at the CWI, or at least in our group, but it's like computation time is cheaper than, uh, than human time. So um, we thought, okay, let's, uh, 
let's throw computation power at the problem and uh, see. So the so the idea is to have um, to have this parsing to look at this parsing from a more holistic point of view. So um, instead of generating one parsing result, we generate a lot and decide in the end which of those parsing results looks best. Um, so we call that multi-hypothesis parsing. And um, yeah, we see those, this tree gets built up on, uh, on different assumptions every, which are made in every, in every step of the parsing process. So and um, a regular, every, in every step we have heuristics which are guessing, encoding, dialect, whatsoever. And they, uh, of course, have certain probabilities that, uh, that one or the other holds. So if we look what a uh, regular parser would do, it would always go for the, for the most probable path. It's like, kind of greedy and goes for the, um, yeah, for this one. But if we look at the results, we actually maybe want another path in that, uh, in that parsing tree. So, um, but now the question is, how, do, how can we identify that, uh, that um, this table in the middle is the good one? So, and that's, um, that's why we need somehow to measure the quality of tables we get out of this parsing process. So, um, the idea is to take, um, to look at different properties of the table. To, first of all, we want to look at, we, we don't want to generate tables, as I said uh, before, which are far away from the, from the original input. So it should stay close to what we read in the beginning. But on the other hand, the table shape is important. If we, have, if we pass a table and we have five different results, and some results are very um, nicely squared, squared shaped, and one has only one row, uh, one, one column, then we can be pretty sure that this parsing result is probably not as good as the other ones, and so on. We can also look at consistency of values inside columns. That would have solved uh, the, the case before, then we would have seen, okay, in one parsing we have the uh, currencies in each column, and in the other one it's uh, less consistent. So um, we, um, we built a quality metric out of this, and evaluated on 100 um, uh, manually clean tables against their messy versions. And uh, we could definitely see a difference between, so we could measure uh, the difference between a good and a bad table, but it's of course not significant. So somehow we want to, we want to get a bigger training set for, for our quality metric and um, yeah, I think that's, that's why I would also ask you maybe if you have ideas uh, where we could get messy tables right next to the cleaned versions. I think a lot of people are doing that on a daily basis, cleaning data. And uh, so these data sets have to be somewhere, but I couldn't find uh, any yet. Uh, so if you have suggestions, I would be very happy to know. And. Um, yeah, of course, so, so to wrap it up a bit, in the end we will um, end up, the goal is to have this uh, multi-hypothesis framework, um, which is modular, so we can define different, different parsing steps, and it has a very, it has well-defined and untangled uh, detecting and parsing steps. And there's, it's always stepwise. So we can say, okay, first we detect encoding, we read the text, then we go to the next level, detect in the, the, the dialect, pass it accordingly, and so on. And um, we can even include stepwise error handling if we say, okay, if the parsing of the dialect fails, then we choose to uh, to solve the problem in different ways. We don't necessarily have to, like a regular parser, it has to spit out one, one result. So if something fails along the way, it could maybe fix it somehow, but it has to choose for one option. Now we can fix it in five different ways and see in the end which fix turns out to be the best one. Um, 
Uh, and of course, if uh, we, at the end of the tree, we can't find the optimal solution, then we can still, um, then we can still ask the user and, and, and propose, uh, like we have those three different tables, which, which one which you think is closest to the, to what is actually in the, in the messy table. So, and uh, yeah, the goal is of course to have tidy tables in the end. And um, we are currently working on a, on a framework in R to, um, to enable that. And um, it's more or less in a prototype phase, so um, we are not having any um, public source code yet, but we are planning to, um, yeah, to make it public and uh, yeah, to make it possible to develop own modules to make uh, maybe more extensive or different table shape detection uh, modules for it. So, um, well, that's, um, that's it. Thank you. So, um, any questions? Yeah, I think I, I think if we are using it on the um, DataGov UK corpus, we are, we are only dealing with very small files, so in that case, it wouldn't um, wouldn't change so much if we would uh, in, in per performance-wise at least if we look at the small files. But um, I think the problem also changes if we go to bigger files, which are uh, a gigabyte or ten or whatever. Then the person who produces the file is also not uh, producing it for human uh, readability, probably. So then we, are, we get rid of a lot of issues which we have in the smaller files. But in that case, it would be, uh, of course, uh, yeah, it would be better to look only at a fraction of the file. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you done anything like see if the content of that cell contains the euro and then try and paste or parse the content of that cell as a euro value? And if it doesn't parse, then you can try and yeah. how you're extracting the table. Yeah, it could be like the data type detection uh, module in the end, which is doing that. Yeah. It's, um, we, are, we are not yet implementing the heuristics itself, but more the, um, the structure to, to allow that. So if we have uh, telephone numbers or zip codes or whatever, or currencies, then uh, it, the framework would allow to implement them. <laughs>